Hey guys, it's Tom uh, here in my studio. Got no shoes on. This is kind of normally how I roll if I don't have clients over, which is most of the time. Uh, and I'm just recording the voiceover for this into Pro Tools. So I'm sorry if that's distracting. I figured I'd throw up an EQ. So at least there's something on the other monitor. But we're not going to be doing anything in Pro Tools today. I mostly wanted to uh, address a question that's come up about, well, a lot of people just starting out either on my YouTube channel or recently I went to go talk at a college and they had the same question, which is what are some tips you'd give somebody that's just starting out in their audio post-production career? So uh, I had to write them down on my phone because my memory's not that great, but I figured I'd go over them and, uh, you know, I, I'll have plenty of time for technical stuff on dialogue editing and sound effects editing later, but just as kind of a break from the heavy screen capture Pro Tools stuff, I thought this has, been, this has come up a lot. Uh, number one tip for somebody that is starting out in their audio post-production career is to be a yes man or yes woman. Don't say no to projects. Take as many projects as you can, whether the budget's great, whether the budget is low, maybe a couple no budget projects if you have no experience at all because at this point in your career it's really just about building your experience enough to where your skills get to the point where you can charge a living wage for them so be don't say no to stuff be a yes person um, and that also goes for notes like when a director or producer gives you notes on stuff don't say well gosh i don't know if i want to do that just indulge them. Do the note, do the change they want you to do. And if you feel like it's not working for you, by all means say, hey, uh, really great idea for us to try. Here's why I don't think that's working. But at the end of the day, it's their project. So you kind of have to indulge them and do what they want. Um, but still keep, you know, a little bit of your pride in your workmanship and feel free to chime in on stuff. Just don't be a jerk about it. So that's number one is basically say yes to stuff. Say yes to projects, say yes to notes. Just build up enough to where down your career, down the road, when you have enough experience and you've worked with clients long enough, if you say no to them, they should be pretty open to it. You know, they're not going to be like, who's this guy that's telling me yes or no. The second is to grow your network. There's like a corny saying, your network is your net worth. Pretty much all of my work at this point in my career, and I've been doing this for about 15 years now, it all comes from past clients. I rarely get new clients. Every year I get maybe like three or four clients that hey, I have never worked with them before. So my whole everything, my mortgage, my grocery bill, like everything is paid for by my network by my past clients. So that kind of ties into saying yes to stuff is that I've cultivated a, a relationship with them enough to where they trust me with things and they keep feeding me work. So it's really important to have a network. How do you make that network? Uh, if you're in school, other students. There are gonna be students that go above and beyond. Their career takes off. They will take you with them on their rise if you start with them on day one. So if you're in college or some kind of school, get with other students, work on student films, go to the, the, the TV station or, or a radio station. I did both of those things in college where I was like, get, hook me up with, with work. Like I'm a student, I wanna learn, let me work on stuff. If you're a professional and um, you know, you've moved somewhere, find out who's doing projects, get with them, ask to work with them, don't be annoying, but like just steadily keep on reminding them, hey, I do sound, I really want to work with you. And be specific about like projects that you like that they've done. Oh, I really like this commercial you did, or I saw your short film at a film festival. That type of like connection will like get you in the door faster than just I want to work with you. If you're looking for post-production houses, you know, like studios and stuff, make sure you find out where they are. Uh, who makes the hiring decisions there. And it's tough now because it's basically email, phone call, like you get shut out of a lot of that stuff. But find some connection you have with them. Maybe you know somebody who works there or some kind of family connection. That is really 
the network that gets people started in their career is like knowing somebody that can vouch for them. So that's number two is grow your network. Number three kind of goes with that. Go where the action is. If you live in a small podunk little town, you're probably not going to make a living doing audio post-production or sound design. It's just, there's no market for it. And if you try to go online, you know, on Upwork or Fiverr or whatever sites there are for finding work, you are going to be competing on a global scale with people who have specialized in finding online work that pays good. I did that for a while. It took me about a year before I got up to the point where I was like one of the top, um, I forget what they called it, top uh, freelancers or whatever. And that's with a body of experience that could, you know, I could point to on IMDb and say, look, I worked on all these movies and here I am on this website. Let's work together. If you don't have that, then you're going to be starting from square one on those websites and it's going to be really tough. So ideally you move to a big city in the U.S. that's Los Angeles, New York, uh, Chicago a little bit. And then if you're on the production side, obviously Atlanta, Albuquerque, there's some studios in the Carolinas. But like you kind of have to go where the work is to build your network and to be able to say yes to stuff. So I know we're on an online world and everything, you know, the connections are just an email away. But that personal interaction is crucial. Like I'm feeling that as a remote worker is that I don't have that, you know, face to face contact with people. And it's easy for them to forget about you. Make sure you're where the action is, at least starting out. Uh, number four is to ditch the gas, ditch the gear acquisition syndrome. It seems like every month there's a new AI noise reduction tool that comes out and people just jump on it and they they spend the $79 or $200 or $500 bucks and, and the plugin makers are like pushing out to these influencers and they're just, it's it's just a money machine. It's just generating revenue for these companies. Does it make your mix sound any better? If you don't have that tool or a version of that tool, maybe, but I see people who have like 10 noise reduction tools and they say, well, I use each for, spe you know, special, special things. And like you end up spending so much money on plugins that you lose the time to get to know one or two plugins that you can work really, really well. If you're starting out, get a noise reduction plugin that you like one. Um, and make sure you have EQs that work like stock Pro Tools EQs, totally fine. You don't need to have FabFilter. You don't need to have like the Masseys and the like all these different console emulations. Like you don't need that. You need a simple EQ that can notch out things, boost things. You need a simple compressor and you need some kind of noise reduction. And even noise reduction, you don't need it all the time. You don't have to use it all the time. But you don't need to be spending, you know, two grand every five months to buy the latest AI voice isolation, like just pick one, learn how it works. If, uh, if that's isotope, great. If it's one of the other ones, that's fine too. I probably have like three or four and I fell prey to gear acquisition syndrome where I was like, Ooh, that those demos sound pretty good. Or such and such is, has got 10 reels on this noise reduction. And that makes me want to buy it. So kudos to them. The sales pitch worked on me, but now it's like, I'm just kind of sitting back I got what I got. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to use it really well. And I'm just going to focus on how do I get the best sound out of what I already have. Once I need something, maybe I'll buy it. But do you really need it? Probably not. If you're just starting out, learn basics, EQ, compression, uh, dynamics, you know, DSing, maybe a little bit of reverb. But don't think like, oh, if I spend 500 bucks on this plugin, my mixes are going to be like, you know, A plus blockbuster level. It doesn't work like that. I've, I've worked with mixers who use stock Pro Tools plugins and their mixes sound fantastic because they've got experience. So work on experience acquisition syndrome, not gear acquisition syndrome. So that's four. Don't worry about buying gear until you actually need it. Uh, and then five, this is like, kind of goes for a lot of different jobs. Focus on what makes your skills unique. Don't try to do everything or copy a person or like, you know, just generally make people like what you're doing. Don't worry about that. Worry about what sets you apart. Why are people going to pick you over this other person? Is it because 
your personality is really good, you're good with clients? Is it because you record all your own sound effects, which is a great thing to do? Is it because you work really fast? Is it because you work slow, but the quality of your work is impeccable? Figure out your unique selling uh, proposition, which is like a sales thing, like that comes from sales and marketing, but figure out what makes you you and then just lean into that because a jack of all trades is going to be a master of none. So those are my top five tips for people just starting out in uh, audio post-production. There are probably some I need to go back over and, and try to adhere to a little closer, um, but hopefully that helps you. And if you have any, any of your tips for people starting out, go ahead and comment below and let's get a conversation going on you know, how you got to your career, what can help people out, and, uh, and let's just keep that going. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.